welcome back to the Artist Talk series. I'm Mike, and I run the Spray Days YouTube channel, bringing you all sorts of graffiti and street art content. Today, we have an awesome guest who creates stunning murals and studio work with a heavy Latin influence. I've always loved seeing his work, and I've been a fan for a while now, so really excited to get talking to him. So let's jump straight into it, and let me introduce to you guys, Timon Delat. How's it going, mate? Yeah, things are good here, man. Good, good. I, I can't thank you enough for sparing some time. I know you're overseas at the moment. Can you tell us where you are and, and what you're doing out there? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm in Bonaire, which is uh, uh, a small part of... Uh, it's like a Caribbean island uh, just in, in front of the, the Venezuelan coast. Um, and I'm here to, uh, uh, to paint uh, and to teach some local kids. Uh, like... Um, yeah, like uh, to, to, to kind of encourage the local community uh, and, and give them some tips and tricks, uh, especially to the youth, uh, how to paint murals and uh, how to, uh, yeah, to get themselves a bit more into the game. Awesome, awesome. And was that just an invitation thing or was that something you applied for or how did you get involved in that? Yeah, th this is a project by uh, Rewriters uh, uh, 010, uh, an in initiative from, uh, from Rotterdam, from my hometown. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Street Colors Bonaire, uh, which is uh, uh, a plan that they set up together with Hofi Cultural, which is like a cultural center here on the island. Uh, and I'm one of three artists that got invited to, uh, to come and paint here. Wow. Um, and uh, I'm here for the next five weeks on this uh, tropicality. Wow, that came at a great time, man. I mean, was that a good time for you to just get away and get some sunshine? Oh, man, it is. The timing couldn't be better. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt I felt a bit cheeky for leaving, you know, but um, it, I had the excuse of uh, doing some essential work here because it's uh, teaching, so uh, I was permitted to go. And uh, to be honest, it's honest, it, it's like really really nice here. Uh, I, I think there's only three of cases on the island at the moment. Oh, there's oh, about great. there's about twenty thousand people that live here, so it's a, it's a very small community. And have you been there before? Or is this your first time visiting? Yeah, first time. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah. And, and you're yeah. enjoying yourself, I take it. How are the locals taking to all the art and, and how are the kids reacting to the classes? Yeah, they're, uh, uh, they're very, uh, very open people. Uh, they're very interested in, uh, in street culture as well. Um, I just finished uh, one wall in the city centre here. Uh, well, cities may be a big word, but uh, yeah, it's a... A town. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like five streets and a couple of bars. But um, yeah, so I got to paint something there, and uh, the responses are, uh, are are sublime. Like they're uh, they're really interested, and uh, the kids, I mean, they're eager. I'm so surprised because there's no real art colleges here. Like they teach uh, some art classes in school, but once they want to continue, let's say, then they need to move off the island and uh, go to the states or go, go to the Netherlands uh, to uh, uh, proceed their education there. Yeah. Um, so uh, that being said, I, I think they're uh, miraculously good. Like they, uh, they're really self-taught. If they have this interest, they, uh, they dive onto YouTube and uh, do all these tutorials and uh, they're going crazy. So uh, I have good faith. There'll be some, um, yeah, some local talent uh, coming and uh, traveling the world soon. The next generation of artists. Definitely. Hopefully there's some seeds laid there and, and they get the idea and, and, and get into it. And like you say, you've got the world as your oyster now with YouTube and everything at your hands. I mean, how, so how did you get started in, in, in street art and everything? Were you sort of looking at tutorials or did you go to art school or? Um, well, yeah, back in the days, I, uh, uh, when I was a young kid, I was living in Delft, which is uh, it's quite a cultural town. Uh, uh, Vermeer, for example, uh, uh, is an artist uh, who, uh, who came from that direction. Right. Um, yeah, but it's all, all kind of more classical school, the art. Um, and there was, a, there was a bit of an underground movement going on. Uh, but I, I, um, I found it a bit hard to, to get in touch with these guys. So I, uh, I tried some stuff uh, when I was younger, like I was uh, reading some magazines and, uh, and getting into the, the hip hop culture. But uh, uh, yeah, in all honesty, uh, um, I, I didn't really have anybody to spar with or to, uh, to kind of get the feedback. So uh, uh, I did some tags and, uh, and some pieces, but uh, it was short lived um, and it was quite exciting because I was by myself. And uh, so I realized like, OK, maybe uh, maybe I need to focus on uh, on some other things. Uh, and I started to do more drawing uh, and things like this. So that was when I was a kid. 
then I decided that the drawing was uh, uh, like the feeling I was getting from it. It really, uh, it really was uh, giving me, a, let's say, a satisfaction. Uh, so I took some art classes in school, nice. uh, and that and that kind of got me into the art academy. Um, that was when I was 17. I moved to Rotterdam. Um, so that's a, a place like, um, let's say, uh, 20 kilometers away from Delft. Uh, went to school there uh, and did art direction. So uh, more like the, the advertising uh, uh, side of, uh, of art. Okay. Um, and when I finished, I realized that that wasn't it. Like uh, there's just too many people getting involved in your ID and uh, uh, so little of your concept would be uh, left over. So I decided to, uh, um, yeah, to try something else. Cool. And that's, uh, that's how it started, yeah. Awesome. And did you meet other people at, in Rotterdam that were sort of involved in the scene at that time? Uh, at that time, uh, well, there were some, uh, but I was mainly focused on, on advertising because I thought that that was the direction that I was going to take. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, when I finished uh, the Art Academy at 21, I realized that uh, I couldn't uh, really uh, draw or paint uh, much better than I did before I started. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a pretty crappy realization. Um, and that's when I, uh, I thought like, okay, I need, to, uh, I need to change some things about and, uh, and try, something, uh, try something new. Um, first, I wanted to see the world. So I went to travel a bit. And then, um, yeah, traveling, I realized that having all that time uh, was, just, uh, um, was just amazing. And um, I did some sketches and things there. I painted some walls. Uh, and uh, from there on, I kind of started to develop it uh, a bit further. Yeah, I was going to say, is that this sort of Latin American influence that's really strong in your work? It, it, does that come from your travel and, and, and your experiences abroad? Yeah, yeah. I'd, well, now I like in retrospect, I think uh, I, I can I can say uh, fairly surely that, that that's where it came from. Uh, at that time, I, I, I was just traveling, you know, I didn't have any idea of what I was going to do. Uh, I saved up some money and I thought I'd just leave and uh, step away from the comfort and luxury and the, the, the safe environment that we have uh, uh, back home yes. and, uh, and throw myself down the deep end. So I, I, booked, I booked a ticket to, uh, to Mexico and I had a, a, a year time to, to get back from Argentina. Um, I took $3,000. That's what I uh, saved at that time. I took that with me uh, and, and left. Uh, I took a tent and uh, two pairs of pants, five socks, and uh, that, that, that was it. Straight I don't out. know if I, I don't know if I do it all over again, just oh, the way man. I did it then. But oh, uh, yeah, what it, was, it was it, a nice what adventure. What was it about South America that drew you to there? What was it that made you want to travel there in the first place? Yeah, um, well, I was thinking like quite logically for me, it was I wanted to learn another language as well. Okay. Um, I, I thought like if I travel, for example, Asia, which kind of more people were doing, um, I would need to learn a lot of different languages to be able yeah. to communicate. And sure. I thought like if I if I travel from Mexico to Argentina, uh, it's going to be predominantly uh, Spanish. So, uh, yeah, and languages are like a super important way to uh, um, to communicate, of course, uh, which opens up doors. And uh, yeah, like I said, I had three thousand dollars. So um if, if you don't have the money and uh then then, then you, you need to find other ways to uh, to open up doors and uh, and i thought language would be uh, something that i could and use when i get back you know like something for uh, for longer term 100%. um yeah and and get in touch with the local people but uh, because of this uh <laughs> this small budget let's say the eight bucks uh, per day for traveling eating sleeping and uh, drinking um i couldn't really go to all these touristy places so I've traveled Latin America for a year, but I've seen fuck all. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but what I did have was time. So this was, uh, this was actually something uh, that I realized was very special. Um, and uh, I had to avoid all the touristy places. So meaning that I was going to maybe less touristy places where the prices were lower. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was hanging around on like the plazas and the, uh, talking to the locals and that's where I heard their stories uh, and, and I got to, to see their way of life, you know, the way they think uh, and how open and warm hearted these people are, even though they, uh, uh, they may have less uh, from what we see as value in, uh, in, uh, in our part of the world. 
they have a lot more uh, in hospitality, in uh, uh, in friendship, in uh, how, how close people are together. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. There's a lot of bad shit going on over there as well. But their attitude to life is something that I, uh, yeah, I could really, uh, I could really take lessons from. Definitely, and is is that something that would, would comes into play with the color? I mean, obviously, you see a lot of bright colors in these countries everywhere, and, and they're always sort of seem to be so happy and vibrant places. Is is that something yeah. that plays into it as well? Yeah, yeah, I I, I didn't realize it uh, when I uh, when I came back, uh, but but definitely uh, in retrospect, that that is where it uh, where it came from. Uh, so I, I was just traveling and I was thinking like, what am I going to do? Like, what would be a, a nice way to, uh, uh, to continue maybe being creative, but not work in the advertising industry. Um, and then I, uh, uh, I got back uh, to the Netherlands with, uh, with one, uh, one dollar in my pocket, uh, and, um, and thought like the, the freedom, the time, you know, the, the way of, uh, of life, I, I realized I don't need much to be happy. Um, which uh, gave me kind of uh, an opportunity to reconsider like how I want to live my life when I get back. Uh, um, and because when I finished the academy and I couldn't really uh, like draw much or like I, I felt comfortable with what I, what I was doing, I, uh, I decided to give myself 10 years to, uh, to play around uh, and paint everything and anything uh, that comes on my way and uh, try and develop something. But when I was doing this, and this is to come back to your question, is, is I, I, I realized that there was a lot of color always coming back uh, in my work, which I couldn't pinpoint at the time. But uh, after a couple of years, I started to realize that that is actually the influence of that trip that, that I did. And uh, yeah, so I'm super, super happy that I did that trip and uh, uh, that I get to meet the people. And uh, yeah, I think the colors come from there, you know, the... Yeah. the I mean, the sun is shining a lot, you know, so colors are, are just in general more vibrant, you know, there's more reflection of, of things. Uh, they have these uh, houses here, uh, uh, the colonial houses. Oh, it's a lot of wind here. Um, uh, the colonial houses and stuff like that was one of the most obvious things that you see in the streets, uh, but also uh, uh, like especially the indigenous people, the clothing that they wear, uh, all the handicrafts that they do. Uh, their local art, but also their food. Um, everything is very vibrant, colorful, and um, it seems to have a very positive uh, uh, outlook. Uh, and and I think that left a, a very lasting impression on me. Definitely, man, definitely. And with yeah. the murals you create over there, are you using certain reference photos or certain people that are specific to those areas that you're painting? Uh, well, when I was traveling there, I, uh, I did some walls at hostels, uh, just not to spend any money uh, and I could stay at the places and, and make myself useful. Um, that time I was just drawing basic stuff that was uh, um, yeah, mostly uh, originating from, uh, from what I was doing back home. So I, I did some uh, drawing on, uh, on clothing, like I customized jeans and jackets and uh, stuff like that back in the days. Um, and then... Um, yeah, just just the things that I that I understood, you know, that I thought like, okay, I, I can draw this. I was painting that on the wall there. So on my first trip, I wasn't really painting the things uh, that were reflecting what I've uh, experienced. Let's say uh, that kind of came more uh, at a later stage when I when I got back to the to the Netherlands uh, and I was processing everything that had happened in uh, in that one year. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And when you started painting this work, did you start seeing people a demand for it? Were people asking for commission jobs and walls back in Rotterdam now? In the beginning, no, dude, not at all. Uh... <laughs> it was a grind. No. Yeah, no, it, it, it was good. You know, if it comes easy, it goes easy. So uh, um, yeah. for me, it was uh, it, it was very much an, uh, an experiment. Uh, the, at the art academy, we were always taught to have a concept, you know, and work from a certain ID. Uh, so I decided that I'm gonna do my concept is not to have a concept for ten years, uh, and just uh, and just paint all you sorts of different it. things. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, what that gave me was actually uh, uh, the great opportunity to make mistakes. One of the most valuable things that you can do, I think, as an artist. Uh, I, I tried many different things, you know. Uh, what people wanted to see, you know, like uh, th there were some uh, some commissions coming in, so I was painting just whatever people were asking. Yeah, um, I was also painting. Yeah, 
painting things that I, I found hard, you know, like um, uh, what, what stuff, you know, what's a challenge. Um, but to have to not have a concept for this this 10 years was uh, actually quite quite valuable uh, because you try so many different things and in the end you kind of I, I try to bring it all together after these 10 years and uh, uh, say uh, like okay this is uh, what I know this is what worked out you know uh, what was helpful uh, this could be what's in demand you know at that time but mostly what I was looking for is uh, uh, what I like to paint, where, where are my challenges. So, uh, and that was portraiture. Like I, uh, I couldn't uh, draw a face for the life of me. So I thought like that, that, that's, uh, that, that's maybe a good thing to, uh, to try. Practice. Um, yeah, practice. And, uh, yeah, and, and also uh, what's my story, you know, what makes me happy? Where, where do I come from? What, what, is, uh, what do I have to say? Um, and that's when I realized that I wanted to tell more about uh, uh, humanity or the different cultures that we have in, uh, uh, on this planet uh, and, and the richness that they know, yeah. uh, <clears throat> which is uh, a different richness maybe to what we are uh, used to, uh, but definitely uh, worth, worth a lot, you know? Definitely, definitely. I think it's, it's an awesome theme and it's really original to go with something like that, that sort of spreads a message and brings awareness as well. <clears throat> like you say, it's easy enough to just fall into painting what people expect or what people are looking for. But to do your own yeah. thing, I think is really honourable. Thanks. And is there anywhere that you haven't been or travelled that you'd love to go and paint? Oh man, this, the world is so big. Uh, there's, there's there's so many beautiful places for sure and, and and yeah and and of course there are places that you may be more attracted to and other places that you're less attracted to um but i think you can only judge that properly is once you've been there and then you can say like you know what maybe that wasn't for me or i love that and i need to go and then to have that surprise you know to be knocked out of your socks or off your socks i think that is that is uh, that's one of the valuable uh, valuable things like to yeah. be blown away yeah. Uh, and not to have exp uh, sorry, and not, and not to have these expectations, you know. Yeah, definitely. And is there anywhere that sort of sticks out for you like that, where you did, where you thought it, you might be going for not such a great time, and it turned out being the best time? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, well, it's it's not that I wasn't expecting that that it wasn't going to be such a such a great time, but uh, like the, the, expectations. The, yeah. Um, well, South Africa, I love. Like, uh, uh, that was a really, uh, really nice place. Uh, great people, a uh, big mix of cultures. Um, of course, they have the, a lot of race issues and, uh, and things going on like that. Um, but yeah, I was, I was blown away by, by how, how stunning and beautiful, uh, beautiful it was, uh, for sure. Did you get to explore a lot of stuff? I, mean, I know a lot of areas are sort of no-go zones and they're very sort of picky about where tourists go and, and did you see that when you were there or, or did that not come um out? yeah I, well we, we we tried to go in but uh yeah we were definitely also advised not to uh, to do this uh, on uh, unguided um but yeah you, you you see these uh these people and the stories that they have to tell um and it's uh yeah it's impressive you know it's um yeah, but also like a country like Thailand, where everybody is saying like, "Oh, it's uh, it's beautiful, it's amazing," and uh, uh, but you know, it's like w really well traveled. Uh, I kind of lowered my expectations of finding more traditional culture uh, and and trying to be able to go deeper into uh, the society. Uh, but I, I I did find those things in the end. You know, uh, I was there when the there were like some political unrest and. Uh, uh, some protests with the yellow shirts and the red shirts and uh, uh, big barricades and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's a shitty situation for them. But but for me as an outsider, it's it's very interesting to to see these things and uh, and to see a, a different side to uh, to a country where uh, people think that, that everything is perfect there. You know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Hundred percent. Everywhere's got a bad and a good side, and, and everyone's got stuff going on. So it's great to see absolutely out of a country or a city when you go and travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think everybody has the the same amount of misery and uh, and happiness uh, is just uh, divided in different ways. Definitely, definitely. And now back home in Rotterdam, I mean, one of the favorite projects I saw over the last few years was the powwow that was going on there. 
Can you tell us yeah. about that and, and sort of what effect that's having on Rotterdam as a city? Yeah, uh, yeah, massive, massive effect. Um, what, what's happening is, uh, is, well, especially the communication, like on the ground, there's, there's already been a, a lot been happening in, uh, in Rotterdam. It's been a very active uh, culture, uh, uh, hip hop wise, like uh, uh, painting wise as well. Uh, maybe in the, the beginning of the year is like more illegal stuff, but uh, uh, for example, for an organization like Powwow to come to, uh, to Rotterdam, what it brings is uh, uh, enthusiasm also from the, the municipality uh, and the realization that this is actually uh, a lot bigger than they might have expected. So in the first years uh, before Powwow, um, I, I was organizing a, a small paint festival together with a good friend of mine, Robert Rost. Uh, and uh, and we were doing this, but the municipality wasn't really having it. Like they uh, they didn't really want to support us like financially. So right. it was it was more for the love of it and uh, to unite, uh, let's say, and to get to know more of the local artists and the local scene. Um, and after a couple of years, they were still not giving any money and it was a uh, uh, like any funding. But it was a lot of work to do it. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, so we decided to uh, to call it quits. And then uh, two years later, uh, a powwow came, um, which is, of course, a lot bigger, better organized, and people that do this full time, you know, it's a that lot. really put the time. It. A lot of everything, they've been doing it for many yeah. years. Yeah, and I realized, like, for me, it was more important to, to focus on my painting, you know. Um, like, my 10 years were over, and I said, like, okay, I need to, uh, I need to put full focus on, uh, on just uh, getting better, you know, like, uh, getting my work uh, uh, to a certain level uh, that it's uh, hard to be ignored anymore, uh, and I'm, I'm still trying to, uh, to get there, but, uh, yeah, like, Pow Wow did, did many, many good things uh, in, uh, in Rotterdam, and I was lucky enough to paint their... Uh, uh, I, to do a collab with uh, with Nuno Nuno Viegas, I think you also interviewed him. Uh, yeah, for uh, sure. Before I got yeah. just that piece in in the flesh, and it, it it was it's awesome. The size you just can't tell it on pictures. You just can't even fit it in the picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, it was a uh, was a nice small uh, like what well, it was a uh, eighty meters by by nine or something. Yeah, I see you have a piece uh, by uh, by Nuno and Snick uh, behind you as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm a big fan, big fan of Nuno's. Yeah, awesome, man. Awesome. That's really, uh, that's really cool. And how did you uh, so guys get together for that collab? You, you guys worked together before then, or? Um, yeah, well, we, uh, we, we did some, uh, some walls together. Actually, uh, um, I met Nuno in Rotterdam. He, cool. uh, he left, uh, he left Portugal to, uh, to find a better art existence and, uh, to learn stuff. And, uh, he was, uh, uh, he started off as, as my student, my, uh, my intern. As he said, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and I mean, this guy picked it up so fast and he's, he's so on point, like his story that he tells and everything that he saw is just so he, uh, I, yeah, I saw the potential, uh, uh, and, uh, well, I, I don't think I have to say anything more because we already know where he is and what he's doing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, he did the internship and then he just stuck around and we became studio mates, um, shared a studio. He painted, uh, uh, on the one side, I painted on the other side. Nice. Uh, and and that's kind of where it uh, where it started uh, uh, as concerning to the the collab that we did for uh, for Powwow. Um, the guys from Powwow knew that we were sharing a studio as well, so they thought like, oh, okay, let's see if we can uh, if we can get them uh, both to uh, to paint that wall. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then uh, this year there was also Powwow. Yeah. Um, or uh, it's not this year anymore, right? That was 2020. Yeah. <laughs> it's all blurring yeah. into one now. <laughs> Oh man, this whole year, I don't know what happened, man. It's just, uh, I lost track of time. Like <laughs> days, time, dates, it's all gone out. Yeah, there. Groundhog Day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And was there any artists that got flown in that you were a huge fan of? Like that you were, you were shocked to see and get to meet in person? Um, for the, for the Pow Wow, uh, the, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, to be honest, I, uh, I I wasn't even really that uh, well known with uh, uh, like personally with uh, with the local artists uh, just from the Netherlands, you know, like Super A. Yeah. Uh, I knew I knew Telma Mule uh, uh, a bit because my studio used to be uh, quite close to theirs, and we uh, uh, we did a project like way back in the days when they were still called the uh, Codex Inferno. 
Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so just just to get to know the the local artists was already, uh, and to see the faces and to hang out, you know, it, it, the, the vibe is so amazing with these uh, with these festivals. Uh, yeah, that was that was already uh, quite uh, quite special. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, the the second edition, like I, I'd love to see uh, Doer One. Uh, they were uh, they were there uh, in 2019. Wow. Uh, that year, I wasn't painting there, but I. Uh, uh, I went there just to hang out, oh, yeah. uh, spent a little. Uh, yeah, m m many guys came in, and uh, it was uh, was dope. Yeah, and 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 the 2020 edition was just Dutch. It was just the local uh, local uh, local talent. What's going on at the moment? And was that when you got to paint the bus? Yeah, yeah, that's when I uh, that's when I uh, painted the the, the double decker uh, the double decker uh, van, which is now going to be uh, a hostel. Yeah, I saw it. That, that looked like an awesome project, and is it gonna? It's gonna travel around, right? And yeah, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's run by uh, by four girls. They uh, they bought the uh, the the double decker bus, and um, they put it down there for uh, for powwow. So I was painting the outside, and then they they took it. Now they're uh, they're all working to get their. Uh, I think some of them already got their uh, uh, truck driver's license. All oh, right, uh, and. Yeah, and they're doing the inside of the bus, Sick. which is gonna have, uh, I think, nine beds uh -huh. uh, in there. Yeah, really? and uh, yeah, apparently when you go on cruise with them, you wake up in a different spot every day. So yeah. it's like a cruise ship, <laughs> but more outdoor sportsy. And uh, uh, yeah, it's awesome, man. Awesome. Definitely, man. I mean, that's one of the other, I've seen you paint some crazy sort of different items. Like there was a beetle, there's the bus, there's some big silo tankers. Thanks. Is that something that you sort of go for, or were you chosen for the bus, etc., or do you think, oh, I'd love to do one of them? Yeah, well, it, it, it's both. I, I, I'm also a big believer of wishful thinking, you know. So uh, I, I, I knew the girl who, who had the bus, and I sent her a message saying, like, a beautiful thing, but doesn't it need a bit of paint? And this, this, this was even before uh, it was known that it was going to go to powwow. So, oh, wow. Sick. So that was just uh, that was just a, a coincidence, um, and then uh, yeah, in the end, I got a I got a message uh, to be invited again to uh, to paint at Powwow, but because I painted there in 2018, um, like of course they, they want to give a, an opportunity to all the artists, you know, so they can so everybody gets a chance and gets to paint. So I wasn't expecting actually to be uh, to be involved uh, last year or or uh, the year before. But they have a project called 20 Vans, 30 Cans. Yes, yeah. Yeah, you heard of this? And then yeah, I saw yeah, that. Like people, it's wicked. Yeah, so people bring like a camper van or a smaller car. So I thought, oh, maybe that would be nice and I'll sign up for that. Um, and um, yeah, eventually they, uh, I, I got picked the, to, do the, to do the big van, That's the, cool. the double decker bus. That's yeah, cool. awesome, man. It's a wicked little project. And are you seeing a lot of emerging artists now around Rotterdam? Rotterdam, thanks to all these events and sort of these international artists coming in. Are you seeing some yeah. local artists now that you didn't see on the scene before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's definitely a push, and uh, and you can really taste the eagerness as well. You know, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of guys are and girls are uh, uh, are coming to to Rotterdam, um, or uh, are also seeing this opportunity. You know, and thinking like, oh, so if if they can do it, maybe I can do it as well. You know. Just definitely. put in the hard work and uh, and go for it. Definitely, definitely. And you're seeing a lot more yeah. tourists now and people, all the fans going across to Rotterdam instead of just visiting Amsterdam, they're realizing uh -huh. oh, I can get on a train and in 30 minutes I'm in a totally different city with a different vibe and new murals and it, it, it's totally accessible now. Yeah, have you been to Rotterdam uh, by any chance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went yeah? to check the stuff out uh, a couple of years back. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought I hadn't been out to venture there yet, but since Powwow, I thought I have to go over and check it out, and it, it was awesome, man. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and what, what year did you uh, did you come? It would have been 2019. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I visit Amsterdam quite a lot and I'm making a, a habit now of coming across to Rotterdam while I'm there because it, it, like I said, it's just so easy and it's just, yeah. it's, it's a total different thing. Yeah, there's a super good train connection now. Uh, I think it, uh, it's like a high speed one. Uh, it takes like 30 minutes or something to get from Amsterdam to Rotterdam. Yeah. And, 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 
Amsterdam is a beautiful city, you know, like really old school. It's got a lot of museums and theaters and, and things like that. Also a lot of coffee shops and, uh, and, and tourists that like to get uh, off their face. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> Right, a damn sort of uh, a bit more mellow. It, it, there was a lot of industrial stuff going on there. It seemed like there was yeah. some mega walls and some massive potential for future projects. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Rotterdam was always uh, kind of the, the the ugly duckling, you know. Um, <laughs> the working. Yeah, it was industrial. Yeah, working city. You know, the the attitude is very straightforward. We Dutch, uh, we, we're we're quite to the point sometimes, uh, maybe a bit too much. Yeah. Um, but especially in Rotterdam, that is like an extra layer of this, uh, uh, yeah, no nonsense mentality, let's say. Um, but it's a city with a lot of architecture, you know, uh, and quite experimental as well. Yeah. And they've been doing this for uh, for many years. So that yeah. part of the creativity is and everything in the markets and yeah, yeah. Um, but also because of uh, the the history, like uh, Rotterdam used to be quite similar to to Amsterdam as the the classical layout and the kind of, uh, I don't know, 1700, 1600 uh, uh, style build. Sure. Uh, but unfortunately, or yeah, I mean, every negative side also has a positive effect in a, in a way. Uh, uh, but Rotterdam got bombed in the Second World War because it was a st strategic point because of the harbor. And they rebuilt the city um, from scratch. Wow. And they are, still, they are still rebuilding. Like th this now became a part of our uh, city mentality. Uh, and like there's always construction going on left, right, and center. So but um, future for Rotterdam, then a lot of future. Yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely uh, growing and uh, and and really, uh, um, yeah, coming out of puberty and uh, and, and and becoming uh, becoming an adult, you know. And that's uh, we're, we're getting rid of the pimples, but uh, I, I hopefully not all of them, you know, because it, that that rough edge, you know, that to the, the point character. attitude. I, I love that, you know, I, I, I would hate for that to go. Um, and uh, I don't think Rotterdam is uh, the, the city for uh, 20,000 Nutella shops and, uh, uh, and, and uh, where you can buy your waffles. Like, no. <laughs> we, we, we have our own identity, you know, and, uh, and I think the one complements the, uh, the other for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it'll be wicked to see where it goes in the future. I think it will become a lot of a bigger thing in that sense. Uh, um, yeah, I can't wait to see it. To be honest, it's, it's it's across the sea for us. It takes like an hour flight, like say. So you know, it'll be great to get over there and see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of new walls are uh, are, are coming. Not not only painted walls, but because of the bombing, like uh, the new architecture and all of this development, uh, we have buildings that are maybe not as historical uh, as Amsterdam has, and, and therefore more walls that can be painted. For sure, that's a lot of it. Yeah. The permission side of things, and, and if they're open to it and they're seeing the growth it's bringing, they're going to endorse it and get it on their walls. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. wicked. So another thing is, we touched on collaboration there, like working with Nuno. Is is there any yeah. artist that you really do want to collaborate with that you just haven't had the chance to yet, or you have any plans or? Well, the, 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 there are some wish lists, but I've uh, I, I'd love, love, love to uh, because I really admire her work. Uh, I would love to paint something with uh, Matsy, but this is oh. just uh, this is just wishful thinking. Uh, hopefully, maybe uh, with some strange coincidence uh, that that could happen in the future. Never know. But, uh, yeah, you never know. But I uh, I really love the uh, the the skill that she works on. Um, and I, I think I could learn a lot also from the way that she makes transitions, like how she makes these transitions from like 20, 30 meters long, you know, like how the hell do you do that? It's, it's mind blowing. It really is yeah. mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if ever uh, there would be an artist that I could uh, uh, collaborate with, uh, yeah, she, she's on my, uh, on my wish list for sure. Definitely, definitely. Is there yeah. anyone that you're just a fan of that you, not that you think your work would with but just you think their work's really outstanding and people should look out for it I, I think anybody and everybody that paints us something uh that, that's that speaks for them you know yeah. um and 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 there are artists that i i really admire for for what they do or where they have started and and how they they brought up this uh, this industry uh, for example i learned a lot from a good buddy of mine robert rost the the dude who i also organized the festival with uh, we did we did a project once, came together, and uh, and became friends uh, after that. 
uh, and this this man is a, is a fountain of knowledge right. uh, about painting techniques, materials, how to approach things. Um, mostly also for work on canvas. Uh, Nuno, uh, Robert, and I we we uh, still do a lot of calls and uh, and talk about each other's work and like how we can improve and uh, and also beat each other down a little bit <laughs> to, uh, to say like hey dude, lovely piece, but what the hell is going on over here, you know? Uh, because, because that's how we grow, you know. This this, yeah. this is how we improve. Yeah. Um. And and all of our styles are so different uh, from one another. But uh, yeah, I would say and, and Nuno as well. Like I uh, I, I really uh, I really admire his work and uh, uh, his attitude towards life, uh, and also the success that he's having uh, opened up my eyes for uh, uh, maybe uh, readjusting my ambitions. You know, and yeah. say like you know yeah. what actually if this dude can get there so fast and and and. I'm sitting next to him, you know, and we're, we're, we're putting in the same amount of work. There's no excuses. I need, to, I need to step my, yeah, there's no excuses. I need to step my game up, you know? Yeah, uh, and it, so, is it so. wicked to see him, sort of, the work he's doing around now, just seeing him come from where he started to now, it must just be mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it's really good. Yeah. Awesome, man. And how, how, you just talked about sitting in the studio there. How much of your year is sort of split up between studio and, and outside work, would you say? Yeah, uh, well, usually, well, Netherlands is quite cold in the in the winter, um, and now especially with Corona and uh, and like the lockdown, it's been a lot more studio work than uh, than I wanted. Yeah, for sure. Um, but um, yeah, so the winter months, the colder months. I think in in the Netherlands, you can paint from uh, like May uh, up till October, maybe November, and then that the, the time is outside. Uh, but I also like to um, I like to travel. I like to take my uh, uh, my own reference uh, photos to create my own image bank. Uh, so when I travel, uh, I go to Central South America. Uh, the last couple of years, I've been to Mexico a couple of times to uh, uh, to paint there also, and also to uh, to take new new reference shots. So I uh, I have portraitures to uh, to choose from and uh, and to paint uh, uh, all over um so it's it's i think the winter time is is kind of divided between studio work um also maybe doing some setups for longer term projects uh like bigger projects that then happen in the summer so a lot of communication is going on um and uh, and also to to travel you know to countries like uh, latin and south america um to get to get the stuff that i need to be able to paint uh what i love to make yeah Definitely, definitely. I've even seen, I think I saw you in London, you when you were painting with uh, Nuno in Bristol, sorry. Was it for Upfest? Yeah, that was Upfest, yeah. Did you, did you also do a piece in the Lake District? I mean, are you a fan of the UK? Do you come here quite a bit? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm such a fan that it, my, my wife's uh, from the UK, so... Uh... Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, she's, uh, she's from London. Uh, so I was, I was going there quite regularly. Uh, we've been together now for, uh, what is it, like 15 years. Cool. So uh, fly, flying back and forward a lot, um, yeah. And then I heard about Bristol and uh, about Upfest. And uh, um, the first year I did a collab with Nuno there as well. Uh, yeah. Went there with Robert and Nuno, uh, and uh, painted on a, on a on a wooden piece like uh, on a board. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, boardings. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of boardings going on, but yeah, great way to to get to know the people and. Uh, oh, and, and man. To, to kind of get yourself a little bit more into the international uh, uh, circuit. Uh, and then the year after or the year after that, we were invited to come and paint a wall, like uh, a little bit more Side permanent one. Pool. Exactly. The, yeah, yeah. The, the something something arms. Yeah, I can't uh, remember the name now, but I can remember the look like it's a wicked mural as well. Insane. Thanks. Yeah, so we did a, we did a collab there, that which was a mashup of Nuno's face and my face uh, together. Uh, turned With out to be a really weird looking dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was sick. Yeah. It was awesome little yeah. spot. And what did you make of Bristol? Because it's such like even in England, it, it stands out. It's got its own character and stuff. Did did it take you aback how much art there is there and, and how big the scene is? Ah, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's just so much going on, you know. And uh, and and anybody and everybody is there. And uh, and to see work online is uh, is also a little bit different than to see it live, you know. Like sometimes you think a piece is like 
uh, uh, super detailed that you come close and you actually see like how strong the suggestion is of the paint that they use, you know, like how, how expressive it is. And uh, I, think that that's, a lot, that's, I think that a lot how loose it looks up there. And when you stand back or see it on a photo and it, it brings it all together, it's, it's almost as if it's painted for that purpose sometimes. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I think that this is a technique that I, uh, that I aspire to, to learn uh, more in the, in the future. For now, I'm trying to make it more realistic and trying to define the shapes. And then after that, I want to let the, the shapes kind of go uh, and maybe work more towards an uh, expressive uh, uh, style in, in, in paint technique and maybe explore how I can use spray paint uh, as I use my brushes, you know? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and other things you, you see and then you don't realize on the photo like how super detailed and how smooth the transitions are and all of this stuff that you just think like, wow. It, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah, you, you need to get out and see that, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. And have you got any sort of projects coming up or any sort of shows or any exhibitions or anything? I know obviously the world's upside down at the moment, but is there yeah. anything people should be looking out for? Yeah, I got a couple of jobs uh, lined up in uh, in Rotterdam. Uh, it's more uh, more local stuff, especially now because of all the uh, all the jobs got cancelled. Yeah. Uh, for uh, for the international uh, uh, situation, uh, I was gonna go up north to uh, uh, Carlisle to paint with uh, Landmark Street Art, um, but that that got cancelled. I was supposed to go to Sweden uh, and uh, and some other places, but uh, this year there's a mural coming up in Jordan. Uh, that I'll be painting there um, and uh, I'm going to be doing the official mural for the Eurovision Song Contest. Oh really? Uh, no way, man. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the theme of the, the Eurovision thing is uh, open up. Right. Um, and they had a, like an introduction uh, video of the, the, the theme uh, and uh, there was a mural of mine that came past and I thought mm -hmm. like, uh, oh, maybe, maybe this is a sign, you know? So uh, I, uh, I thought like, let's, uh, let's try and because my work is all about inclusivity and, and sharing humanity and Rotterdam is a very culturally diverse uh, city because of its uh, heritage as a port city, it has a lot of people coming from anywhere and everywhere. Um, nope. I thought, yeah, I thought maybe this would be a, a good opportunity uh, to, uh, uh, to show uh, uh, our, our diversiveness and, uh, and also street art in, in Rotterdam, even though the two subjects, Eurovision, and street art don't really have anything like linking them that directly. Sure. Um, yeah, it, it also has a, a, of course, a great following of, uh, of people that, that watch that. Um, and I think that that's a great opportunity for Rotterdam uh, to profile itself also as, a, as an art, uh, art related city. So, uh, yeah, so I've, I've, I've been uh, setting up some work to make a, a mural there and also developing a, a project uh, together with uh, rewriters uh, to see if we can um, we can make that happen. Sick, sick. That's awesome, man. We can't really wait to see what's happening with them projects. It sounds like you've got some good stuff coming up in the future. Yeah, luckily enough, yes. But uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, all of this Corona thing is going to be over soon, and uh, the festival start. And uh, yeah, man. Fingers so we can just rough. Fingers get started. Rough, I mean, you spoke about some projects there. Um, what is it that keeps you going? What keeps you painting, like motivated? Is it the new projects that come in that inspire you or is it just life in general? What is it that keeps you doing what you do, basically? Uh, well, I, I think it's, it's several things. First of all, it's, it's just an, uh, kind of an eagerness to, to get better, to, uh, to be able to uh, manage uh, the, 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 yeah, the paint techniques, you know, to, uh, to get that in my fingers. Uh, I still feel like I have a lot to uh, to learn, uh, especially with portraiture and uh, uh, the use of skin tones and, and stuff like this. So I want to explore that more. Um, yeah, and and the people that that help me uh, uh, do stuff like that is the artists that we see uh, online. You know, like uh, uh, Smog, for example. Like his portraiture is just off the charts. Thelma Mule has really really nice portraiture. Uh, but also classical artists like Tizian, you know, uh, um, that I find uh, uh, very interesting. So, yeah, I, I feel like I have a lot to, uh, to learn uh, with that. Um, and other things that keep me going, I think, is just a, a general sense of curiosity and uh, uh, the, the search for uh, a life uh, enjoyment, you know, uh, getting to know different cultures uh, and uh, 
and and try to tell people my version of uh, of that story awesome man that's awesome and would you have any advice for artists that sort of any any shortcuts or anything for people looking to get into street art maybe like the way that you traveled and got inspiration there would would you advise people to travel yeah uh well yeah i, I think just traveling even if you're not a painter uh i i think it would do any anybody and everybody good uh, well. to at least go away for like not like a vacation like two three weeks but like take your bag i don't know go for like two three months if if, if you can't afford the uh, like long travels maybe you get a euro trip uh, or a train train ticket and, uh, and and cruise europe or wherever you are at definitely it just broadens the mind um to step away from your comforts is a, is a great way to rethink what you are doing and where you want to go. Um, and tips and tricks for, uh, for people that want to start uh, with, with art. First of all, never give up. Because the ones that do, you never hear of. For sure. So just, just bite it like a bulldog yeah, and, and, and hang on with everything you have. I think that is, uh, that is something that what, what I tell my, uh, my students or uh, the kids here at, uh, at school. Also, uh, um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. This is uh, this is one of the most valuable lessons that you can learn, you know. And I can I can try and prevent you to make uh, mistakes, uh, and you might learn something from this. But if you make your own mistake, you are going to grow a lot faster from from it, and it's going to be maybe a little bit harder felt, but you'll never forget it, you know. Yeah, I totally um, agree. I think there's a lot to be learned from mistakes in it. And if you're getting safeguarded from them, you're never really learning. You're aware, but you, you don't know the full consequence until it happens, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's very true. That's wicked. Well, well, thanks for that, mate. And I mean, just finishing off, where where can people find your work? Have you is you got a website live or is it getting in touch with you or yeah um yeah if people want they can uh, they can check my instagram that's usually uh, with stories and stuff like that that's the most up-to-date one uh they can check me at, uh, at my name timon de Laat, uh, um and timon is with a greek y or uh, i don't know how you say this in, in english I know. <laughs> it can work yeah, out so we'll put a link below for you <laughs> oh yeah a link below right there <laughs> Um, yeah, or I have a, a website which is a lot easier to remember, and that's uh, uh, www.melikepainting.com. Cool. Uh, yeah, you can see my uh, my work there. Um, what else? Yeah, I've got Facebook and stuff like that. But if people got questions, if they're interested uh, uh, for work or just want to have some tips and tricks, and they want to know like uh, how to approach stuff, uh, I'm more than happy to help and uh, and to share the knowledge. Uh, I think if we all all do that, you know, then uh, uh, this whole art world would be uh, growing a lot faster, and uh, eventually there there is more more walls than people. So uh, because exactly. there's also walls inside. So yeah, yeah. No, um, totally I, I think this would be uh, that would be the best. Yeah. Yeah, wicked man, wicked. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming on, man. I know you're overseas in the sun and the sea there, so I'm not going to keep you for any longer. Um, no, man, it's good. It's good. Yeah, and like I said, we'll put links to anything we spoke about in the description. So anybody that wants to get in touch with you or find any of your work or anything, um, just look below. There's going to be new episodes coming out every week. So just keep your eyes out. And um, just a huge thanks to Timo for getting involved. So thank you, mate. And um, hopefully yeah. we'll speak again soon. Yeah, thank you for the invitation, Mike. And uh, yeah, let me know whenever you're in Rotterdam uh, so we can grab a beer and uh, maybe do like a, like a tour through the town or something. Uh, see what all the the new works are uh, that are coming up definitely man i would love that man and, and same for you if you're in the uk just let me know man awesome awesome well, Take have care, a nice mate. day then you enjoy the beach <laughs> yeah 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 well i haven't been to the beach man i've been here for two and a half weeks i've only been to the beach once oh you're joking I've, yeah i've just been painting so uh, <laughs> I, I, I need to get my ass in the water, man, for sure. Oh, man. Well, have a wicked time, mate. And, and thank you, mate. It means the world to me. Awesome. All right, and Thank mate. you for having me. See you later, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.